Okay, so I've dismantled our bag, and this is kind of typical what it'll come back after it gets processed, because these bags are reusable. So they'll come back in all these different components, and it's our job to make sure it's assembled properly. Um, so we'll start with the reservoir and attaching it to the bag. Okay. This is the first part you're going to uh, need. It's a little housing for your uh, disc membrane. Um, you'll see there's two different styles of discs, or uh, valves. Uh, the one that you're going to want for the disc membrane for the uh, patient inlet is this thicker one. Okay? And once you start doing this, it's pretty obvious because <clears throat> you're going to start seeing, seeing how they seal around here. So you're going to pull that and just let it uh, fall right around that housing. Inspect that valve to make sure there's no cracks or holes or kinks or anything. You want it to sit nice and flush there. The idea of this valve is it's going to act now as a one-way valve to pull gas into the compressible body. With the, let's try that again. With the uh, housing intact here, let's say this stylet is the gas flow, and it's going to be sitting in my bag in this fashion. Okay, so my valve is facing my compressible body. My reservoir then would be over here, and my gas source is over here. So we'll pretend that this stylet is the flow of gas. As that body of, uh, or sorry, as that gas builds up, it's going to then displace or unseat the housing and push that gas into the BVM so that it, when you squeeze it you're going to have a full breath of oxygen or if it was from room air you're going to have a full breath of 21% ambient oxygen. Okay. It cannot go the other way. The gas can't go the other way because of that uh, approximation of how the housing is. Okay. The valve isn't going to fit through those little circles. It's going to prevent it and direct the gas only into the compressible body. Okay. Next thing we can do is actually put this into our BVM. So slide it in here. You'll see that it's got a threaded connection and you can put the threaded connection so that it's facing uh, the outside of the BVM, the compressible body, and it's going to sit in the BVM like so. Okay. Now you can see that that valve, which is on the inside of the BVM, is going to be allowing gas to go into that compressible body. When I squeeze that, all the gas that's in there can be directed out into my patient. On exhalation, that valve actually unseats and lets that gas fill up from the reservoir so that we have another breath to give on the self-inflating bag. Screwing onto that, we are going to put our uh, reservoir attachment. These have those flap valves that are going to direct the flow from either ambient or from the reservoir. Okay? It's a threaded connection, so it screws right onto your intake valve. And there again, you can see that's where your oxygen source would attach. Okay. So now I've got <clears throat> my intake valve to my compressible body, and I've got my flap valves onto my uh, reservoir. Last simple connection is just put your closed reservoir onto that site there. Okay. Next thing we're going to start building our patient connection. Uh, first thing you can do is take your inspiratory pop-off and screw it onto the top. It's a good time then to reaffirm and check that you've got your uh, proper pop-off. So if 35 centimeters of water is the indicated um, usage. That's the one we're going to have. Some of them will have a little bar on them so that you can actually lock out that and overcome whatever pressure, but this one, it's been removed. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is install our duckbill valve or fish mouth. So there it is there, and there's the action. So when it gets uh, pushed, gas flow comes through here, and you can see that mouth kind of opens up. It's going to sit inside that connection like this okay, and we're going to screw that onto our housing. Lastly, if you look here, when your patient gets a breath, that ductbill, ductbill valve opens up. Gas comes here, opens up that ductbill valve, and we get a breath out to our patient, hopefully seeing chest rise and fall. When they exhale, they're not going to open up that ductbill. The gas is going to be diverted on both sides of the bill, and it's going to be coming out these holes around the side of this housing. Okay? That's going to be able or give us the ability for our patients to exhale. So we put a little valve on here that's more or less 
identifying that the gas flow is actually coming out of our patient and they're exhaling. So when they exhale, we'll actually see that valve move up and down. Okay? And it's also preventing any of the gas from coming back in. Last step is to attach that on, and you've got an assembled BVM. Now what we have to do is we have to check this.